Good afternoon, everyone. Let me introduce the people who are with us today. From my far left, Robert Mejica, who is the director of the New York State Budget. To my immediate left, Ken Rasky, who is the president and chief executive officer of the uh, Greater New York Hospital Association. To my right is our great Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul. To her right, uh, our Secretary of State, Rosanna Rosado. There is a lot going on in the world. There's uh, impeachment. There's uh, elections this coming week for the Democratic primary for president. There's a Super Bowl today. Why anyone would watch the Super Bowl when you don't have a New York team in it, I don't know. But I'm not sure. I'm still, some people will still watch. J Lo's in it. Uh, J Lo's in it. That's, that's a good reason to watch. Uh, but uh, we're going to talk about Puerto Rico today, because with everything that's going on, people tend to forget that Puerto Rico is still facing a very serious ongoing crisis. Uh, and just to refresh our recollection, September 2017th, Puerto Rico had a very serious hurricane, Hurricane Maria, which did extensive damage to the island. Uh, since Hurricane Maria, the island has never really fully recovered. Uh, in my opinion, the federal government has not been of full assistance and has not done what the federal government should have done. They were very slow in releasing federal funds that had been appropriated. Uh, New Yorkers came to the rescue of Puerto Rico uh, with an amazing activism and charity and generosity. Uh, I'm very proud of what uh, all of the groups in New York did. Uh, the hospital association was fantastic. The, uh, our health industry was great. Uh, I went a number of times. Rob Mejica, the budget director, worked very closely with Puerto Rico to put together their recovery plan. Uh, but the island still uh, hadn't recovered. Uh, you can count the number of homes they rebuilt since Hurricane Maria. Uh, and then this January 7th, they get hit with a serious earthquake. Uh, six point, uh, about a six on the Richter scale earthquake, which did tremendous damage. We went down January 15th, and um, the damage was obvious. And it was unlike other crises because it wasn't a one-day episode or a two-day episode, and then it was over. This is an ongoing situation. The tremors have not stopped. The damage has not stopped. People have not yet been able to go back to their homes because you have tremors and earthquakes that are uh, continuing. Over the past month, how many earthquakes do you think there have been in Puerto Rico over the past 30 days? Earthquake defined as above 1.5 on the Richter scale. Over 2,100 earthquakes over the past 30 days. How many do you think over the past week? 330 over the past week, including a 5.0 over this past week, which is serious. So uh, it's been going on now for weeks. You have thousands of people who are still in shelters. Only 20% of the schools in Puerto Rico are open. And the people in the shelters, uh, there are two issues. First, they're not sure that their homes are structurally safe. And you have these ongoing tremors and these ongoing earthquakes. They don't know if it's going to get better. They don't know if it's going to get worse. And they don't know if their homes, many of which were damaged during the significant earthquakes, whether they're safe. So they're staying in these shelters. They're staying in open areas, not even in the shelters. Many people are staying just in open ball fields. They want to be at a place where if something collapses, it's not going to collapse on them, uh, which is a rational response. Uh, and they need significant help to go back and actually inspect all these homes so you can give the homeowner comfort that your home has been inspected, it's safe. Even if you do that, there's still the question of, is there going to be another earthquake 
that actually damages that home in a way that it hasn't been damaged. Uh, so that's a significant issue. You also then have the mental health issue of people have been traumatized. And this has been several weeks that it's been going on. They're still reeling from what happened with Hurricane Maria. Uh, and then this happens, and they have been traumatized. Uh, and they need mental health assistance. Uh, on top of that, the island has had a serious problem getting the power restored. The power grid run by PREPA on the island uh, was never uh, state of the art, and it suffered during Hurricane Maria. During this earthquake, we visited one plant, the Costa Sur power plant, that does 20% of the island's power and the Costa Sur power plant was very badly damaged. It's right on the waterfront, and literally the foundation cracked, and you could see part of the power plant was destabilized. And that's 20% of the power that one plant. So our power authority agency called New York Power Authority, uh, Gil Quinones, has been working with Puerto Rico since the earthquake, but in truth, since Hurricane Maria. He just, we never stopped working with the island since Hurricane Maria. Uh, and that continues. Uh, the lieutenant governor is now going to have a delegation that's going to go to Puerto Rico tomorrow that will bring mental health support. And we want to thank Ken Rasky and the Greater New York Hospital Association and all our, our partners in uh, the mental health industry and the health field who have been just uh, so generous and uh, so willing to go above and beyond. Uh, but they're going to bring mental health professionals. Rosanna Rosado, Secretary of State, is going to be bringing building inspectors down with her, code compliance agents, et cetera, so we can help uh, the island actually do the inspections of the home so people know whether or not the home is safe which is still a big issue in them coming out of the shelters. They need to know the home is safe. Uh, and those will be the two main components, and the uh, power authority uh, is continuing to work. So I want to thank uh, everyone who's going to help. Um, I'm just a little jealous that I'm not going with you, but uh, we have a few issues to deal with here in New York. We're dealing with the coronavirus, and by the way, we'll do a briefing after this on an update on the coronavirus uh, and a little thing called the state budget which uh, we have to do every year and uh, we we always get it done but it takes a little bit of time so uh, I wish I was going with you but you're in good hands with the lieutenant governor uh, and the secretary of state and with Ken Rasky and with that let me turn it over to uh, lieutenant governor protocol is referred to as governor, uh, Governor Hochul. Thank you, Governor Cuomo. Thank you. Uh, governor, first of all, I want to thank you for doing what our federal government refuses to do. Uh, there has been an absence of leadership in an area where they should be doing far more, and that is a point of pride for all of us as New Yorkers to see your leadership on this. And your personal commitment, uh, first of all, on the ground, your countless trips there, but also what you do when you get back to the st state has been nothing st short of extraordinary. Uh, even back in 2015, you sent me to lead a delegation of healthcare professionals to help, help the island. You de deployed experts after Maria. Even now, this effort today shows our, our sustained commitment to these individuals. So you've made us really proud as New Yorkers to be able to stand up and say how we as New Yorkers have embraced our fellow U.S. citizens on the island of Puerto Rico. And also on this trip, we plan to uh, tour some of the earthquake affected areas, meet with local officials, get briefed on their efforts, and literally ask them how else we can help uh, as we continue our efforts there. And the reason this is so important to me personally, that there's always been a strong familial bond between the Puerto Ricans who have made New York their home and also our citizens. This goes back to when my grandfather and father worked shoulder to shoulder with many Puerto Ricans who went to Buffalo and Lackawanna in search of a better life when I was a child. And they became our friends and we got involved in starting a summer camp for the children of the workers. And even just yesterday I was on, in downtown Buffalo, on the Avenida de San Juan. And people there uh, from the original families and those who followed them 
are concerned deeply about what's happening back in their homeland. So that's why this trip is so important. And I'm honored to be traveling with our Secretary Rosado for my fourth trip to the island, but also I want to thank Ken Rasky and all the professionals in this room for being true public servants and going down there and being the face of hope for so many people who've had to deal with uh, unthinkable devastation in their beloved country and their beloved homeland. And as New Yorkers, uh, we let them know that we are one family and we will continue to stand with Puerto Rico. And with that, I'd like to recognize Ken Rasky, the President and CEO of the Greater New York Hospital Association. Thank you, Ken. Well, thank you, Governor, and Governor Cuomo as well. It's, uh, I want to thank you for your leadership, sir, on uh, trying to do as much as we possibly can to ease the pain and suffering of our brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico. Uh, it, it is because of your stellar leadership that uh, we're assembled today and ready to deploy uh, a group of mental health specialists, 26 to be sure, many of them are in this room, and thank you so much for your service and your willingness to help in this time of need. I was uh, fortunate, sir, to be on the trip with you l last month when we did a, a, a tour of the devastation that was uh, that had occurred, or that is occurring. It's an ongo it's a ongoing trauma. And the thing that really struck me was going to these camps where uh, people are living because A, they're afraid to go back to their dwellings, or B, they don't have dwellings to go back to because they have been compromised substantially. And, and, and if you look into their eyes, and I, look, I, 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 I'm, I run a trade association. I don't, I don't, I'm not a mental health specialist like you, so many of you are. But I look in their, their eyes and I see this, the, the despair, uh, the despair of being bombarded, you know, year after year with, with, with one problem after another, none of which was their own doing, none of which was anybody's doing other than so-called natural uh, uh, disasters. And, it, uh, and, and, and when we concluded that trip, it was clear that uh, the, our brothers and sisters need help there. And I reached out to the, the wonderful healthcare systems in, in New York, and, and six, six healthcare systems are sending individuals down. I should like to mention them, Catholic Healthcare Services of Long Island, Montefiore uh, Medical Center, uh, Medicis, Bruce Glanz is here, Mount Sinai, David Rich is here, Northwell Health, and uh, New York Presbyterian. And, and this first wave is really just one of a four-part plan that we have for uh, the island. Uh, the second part will be a second deployment after our, our wonderful mental health specialists can assess what the needs are. Uh, and frankly, you know, you're going to have to tell me. You tell me and then we'll, we'll, we'll step up to the plate. And then our good friends at New York Presbyterian are going to do part three, which will be telemedicine in mental health, which is... It, you know, has a longer term yes. implication. And, and then finally, we're going to be doing a lot of train the trainers down there with academicians from here going down there to train individuals that can then go out to the communities and really search out these people that are hard to reach uh, oftentimes and, 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 and are not necessarily congregated by the situation. So long story short, uh, we, we want to do as much as we possibly can. I want to thank every one of you for your willingness to serve. It's a big deal, and I'm, and I'm damn proud of you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Governor? Well said. Uh, let me turn it over now to our Secretary of State, uh, who has uh, done exemplary work uh, on all sorts of difficult challenges. Uh, because, as I said before, these are difficult days, and uh, this is a little outside the normal portfolio, but if there's anyone who can rise to the occasion, it is our Secretary of State, Rosanna Rosado. Thank you, Governor, and thank you all for being here today. It is for me an honor uh, to go to Puerto Rico, and Governor, I'll stay as long as you need me to. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is the, uh, the homeland of my, my parents and my grandparents, and those of us who are born and raised here in New York and, and throughout the diaspora really consider um, that Puerto Rico is, is also our hometown, and in many ways, uh, I've always said New York is another, another one of the pueblos of Puerto Rico. I mean, that is our relationship, and the governor has been true to that relationship through all of the uh, 
issues that have affected the island. As the governor mentioned, I'll be traveling to Puerto Rico with a rapid safety assessment team that will further assess the damage from the earthquake. Our team is comprised of members of our uh, Division of Building Standards and Codes, which is at DOS, and is rich in experience with inspecting buildings to ensure that they are meeting the highest safety standards. We hope to allay people's fears um, and hopefully um, help them get back into their homes. Throughout the deployment, this team will assess structures using this Applied Technology Council reference standard for earthquake damage. And to help make their work efficient, they're going to be using an app to note the damage and take photos. As they are doing this, um, the teams will be recording their observations and locations using GIS technology to ensure officials on the ground have the most accurate information and assessment. Our team is going to provide those assessments to Puerto Rican officials who will determine whether properties can be declared safe for occupancy so that families can return to their homes. Their efforts should help the people of Puerto Rico ensure the health, safety, and resiliency of their buildings. I'm very proud of my DOS team who will, will be there for two weeks. I'll be back on Tuesday, Governor, but. Uh, <laughs> I'll make sure. Yeah. She'll make sure. I'll keep an eye on her. <laughs> But I stand ready to serve. Uh, Governor, you have always stood in solidarity with Puerto Rico, and I'm very proud to follow you, and I'm very grateful on behalf of my folks um, to do everything possible to help them return to normalcy um, and to help the lives of these people who have been displaced uh, from their homes by this terrible tragedy. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, one last note to the people who are going down. Uh, you will get a gift back. Uh, the gift back is the graciousness and the love of the people of Puerto Rico. Uh, they have such an appreciation for what New Yorkers have done for them. It's uh, incredible, and it is heartwarming. You know, and you have to remember, I mentioned the totality of the circumstance. Uh, they've been under siege now for two years. It's one thing after the other. Uh, they've had all this news that the federal government hasn't been helpful enough, and there's all this politics. Uh, and in the midst of all this, New York has really stepped up and done the right thing over and over and over again. Really, we never left since Hurricane Maria. And they know that, and they are so grateful, and they are so warm and so loving that in the midst of everything, when Ken and I were down there, uh, with Rob just a couple of weeks ago. I mean, while they're in the shelters, they were so thankful and so appreciative, and they kept saying, make sure when you go back, you say thank you to everyone. Thank you to everyone. Uh, thank the New Yorkers for what they've done. And uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful statement about who they are, that at this terrible time, there was no anger, there was no blame, there was just gratitude for the people who were there to help. Uh, so so uh, it's, it's a special place, and they're special people, and they are our family. We're going down to help U.S. citizens, but we're going down to help the Puerto Rican community, which is part of the New York family. New York is not New York without the Puerto Rican community, and uh, that's what it is. Any questions from the press? on this issue? <laughs> Governor, what's the total number of people that are going down uh, on the streets? We have uh, a contingent of mental health and building inspectors, which we'll get you. And then we have an ongoing contingent of people working on the power system uh, from NIPA. How many people from mental health? and? Okay. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Those of you who are going down, God bless you. Thank you. Be safe and thank you for what you're doing. Thank you.